Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klemzeski with Adam Atkinson, episode four in our series, Your First Contest. And we are at the point where you are getting on stage. Last episode, we talked about what to expect backstage, how to get ready, listening for those cues, pay attention to the expediter. But now you're going to be out there. And, and I will say, man, Adam, I can think back at, to, you know, to, to being 20 years old backstage for that first time my heart was about ready to explode out of my chest. Talk about the, you know, the old public speaking type of anxiety just to go out there for the first time. It, it feels like going into battle. I mean, you're, you're, it's all on the line now. So uh, number one, maybe address kind of that mental thought process and then just a little bit of the different nuances between divisions. You know, once you go out there, you, you mentioned a couple episodes ago that, you know, you may have to do your, your walk first, and then you're, you're kind of judged in bikini or maybe vice versa. So, so let's just kind of go through step by step what people can expect on the stage. Yeah. So this is where you really want to lean on the expediter because he's going to give you instructions and uh, really direct everyone. Uh, unfortunately, you see this usually happen once every contest is um, people just follow suit and somebody goes to the wrong place and everyone else follows them. So those instructions really are important. And um, I think this is honestly out of the whole show, one of the best times to listen and the biggest time that people don't because you're right back there. And honestly, the last thing you're thinking of is wanting to listen to this person, but it's super important. So make sure you listen to the expediter. And uh, a lot of times they'll maybe pull you to the diagonal lines first, or they may say, we're going to do comparisons first. So, um, you know, be familiar with what comparisons are or what being on a diagonal looks like. And maybe, maybe we do a segment episode next on like what these things mean. But um, also um, know what a routine looks like on stage. So a good posing coach is probably going to go over these different scenarios for you. I think that's also where it's really important to have a posing coach that aligns with the federations that you're competing in. So they, they know what the expediter um, possibilities that that expediter might tell you. Mm -hmm. And, and this particular kind of information is typically not on a website or on a list somewhere, but, but you do have to listen at the meetings, you know, especially the on-site meetings where the expediter may go through this. But for example, in some classes, let, let's go through like some of the, the bodybuilding type classes, likely they will just bring you out as an entire class and then start doing quarter turns, look at you and then kind of separate you and then do some call outs. Uh, some little, you know, I would say kind of old school organizations may bring you out one at a time to hit a little pose, you know, and then, then hit the lineup. And so you may be called out that way. That's how you enter the stage. So little, little cues and nuances like that can matter. And then, um, as Adam said, just knowing that, okay, the, the first thing I'm going to do, or maybe just the symmetry round poses, then, you know, put everybody back in the original lineup and then come out for the muscularity round where they're doing poses you know, same thing with bikini and figure, you know, they're going to have you typically, you know, either come out and stand there as a class and do some comparisons and then do your walk, or you're going to do your walk first, then come out as a group for those comparisons. So, you know, these are just things you have to have to be listening for and understand because it, it can change contest to contest and organization to organization. And people ask me, well, Adam, like, why isn't there standard? Like, why isn't it the same? They do as close to standard as they can. Um, so what people need to understand is that, you know, a lot of these small changes um, revolve around um, venue setup. And, you know, sometimes the venue's not set up where everyone can file off on the left side of the stage. So they might have you do your routine and go back to where you came from versus, you know, making a straight line off stage. So, um, you know, I know that that seems frustrating to competitors, but when you're looking at venue costs and venue prices, um, you typically go with what's easiest to afford. And sometimes it's just a small change of direction on stage. It's the cost of that, which uh, as long as you're listening, you won't miss. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes organizations do have some uniformity, you know, they have their standards and their 
their operating manuals that, that promoters abide by. But, you know, even promoter to promoter, there's just some artistic variability. They, they like things done a certain way. And sometimes it's organizationally, they're trying to keep things flowing a little bit faster or smoother. So it is just going to, it's going to vary a little bit, but um, stay tuned guys. We're going to wrap this up next episode, talking about the finals and the difference in even whether you have a separate finals or it's, it's a live judging type scenario. So we will see you next time in contest prep university.